before we move into the two higher levels of motivation, and because I emphasize that I empower my kids, that's how I had them do what I would like them to do. I'm going to talk about bullying. And what I'm going to share with you is in the research guide. I want to empower my kids against bullying because there is an awful lot of young people who bully other people. We know it's a real problem in schools. So here's how I empower them. I'll take something horizontal, uh, a yardstick or a rule or something, and I'll say, now, let's assume somebody bullies you. You're going to feel bad. Well, that's natural. But let's look at the motivation, because that's what we're going to be talking about. Why is this person bullying you? Because he wants some attention or a need of feeling he wants some power. So notice what's happening. You're going to feel bad naturally, but this kid, the bully, is out of balance. If it'd be in balance, there would be no need for him to bully other people. This kid has got a problem. Now notice what I've just done. I've just empowered my entire class. What kid wants to be known as having a problem among his or her peers? You see what I'm doing? I'm empowering them ahead of time. So again, of course, you feel bad, but just say to the other person, I'm sorry you're having such a bad day. Or if, for example, on a playground, there's a group of young kids and you see one person bullying somebody else, if you stay there and don't do anything about it, the person oftentimes is doing it to get a crowd, to get a attention. If you don't take the initiative to say, hey, that's not the right thing to do, you're basically empowering the bully. There are all things you can say, but the thing to keep in mind is that no one needs to be a victim. As we talked about earlier, in this situation, you can be empowered by how you react to what the bully does. You do not need to be a victim of bullying. And once you teach your class some ideas such as this, you would be amazed at how effective kids are going to be because they feel empowered. They do not have to put up with bullying. The point is critical to remember through this entire discipline approach, really the entire discipline without teaching model, I am empowering people so that they will be able to confront any situation. Bullying is a big factor with kids. And you should empower kids to teach. Now, unfortunately, some administrators and paper, perhaps even some teachers will say, I, I don't like the word bullying, so I don't want to use it. Sweeping it under the carpet is not the effective way to go. It's a, it's a fact of life. Much of the way that some professors don't like to use the term discipline. They don't like the term because they immediately associated with punishment. And we'll see that punishment is only one definition of discipline. So that professor uses classroom management instead, not even realizing that classroom management, again, has got to do with making teaching effective, whereas discipline, and that's the teacher's responsibility, whereas discipline is the student's responsibility. By the way, there is a side benefit for teaching this approach for the bullies who are in the room. They get to reflect on their own behavior and realize that when they bully someone else, they're out of balance. Notice again what I'm doing. I'm continually empowering people so they never have to be victims, so they can do the right thing, which takes us to level C and level D.